North Korea and the Hermit Kingdom did not disappoint, issuing a scathing criticism of the Sony comedy about a fictional plot to assassinate Kim Jong-un. North Korea says the film is illegal, dishonest, and contrary to the UN Charter. But they saved some of their harshest language for U.S. President Barack Obama. And Paula Hancox is following the story for us from Seoul, South Korea. She joins us now live from Seoul. Paula. Well, Natalie, as you say, this was expected. We, we knew that Pyongyang was furious about this uh, movie release. Uh, we knew they were happy when the release was put on hold. And, of course, uh, we knew that they weren't going to be happy when uh, it, it did decide, uh, Sony Pictures decided to go ahead with the release. So we've had this, uh, this statement from the National Defence Commission. This is a very powerful institution in North Korea, showing how seriously they take this. And they've said this Saturday that they blame Sony Pictures but they also personally blame the U.S. President Barack Obama. They're effectively saying that they believe the U.S. President has put pressure uh, on the, uh, the Sony Pictures uh, Entertainment and, and they forced them uh, and blackmailed them, they say, to carry out this uh, release. So they're, they're really blaming and also insulting President Barack Obama, calling him reckless in words and deeds like a monkey in a tropical forest. So they really are targeting some very personal insults at him. It's not the first time that we've seen this from Pyongyang, but it does show just how angry they are that they went ahead uh, with the release. They also denied once again that they had anything to do with the hacking of Sony Pictures. This was hacking claimed uh, by a group called Guardians of Peace. Uh, the US says that they found links to North Korea. They believe North Korea was behind this, but Pyongyang is denying that once again and furious that Washington is blaming them. Now, we've also seen over the past five days or so uh, intermittent internet uh, outages uh, on, in North Korea, that the state-run media has been disrupted, their Rodon Singman, their, uh, their state-run newspaper, and also other networks and, uh, and internet pages uh, associated with North Korea. They now blame Washington for that. Now, of course, we've had no comment from Washington at all, but the tit-for-tat is, uh, is continuing between uh, the two countries. Relations are souring between the two countries. And of course, the uh, Sony Pictures itself is, uh, is getting publicity that it simply could not have bought from all of this, uh, uh, this controversy from North Korea and the fact that they are so angry. And we are, even here in South Korea, seeing thousands of people illegally downloading this movie. This wasn't going to be one of the places and countries that Sony was really targeting for the movie release. But of course, now with all this controversy, people here want to see it. Natalie? Yes, absolutely. A, a little movie that might not have been seen by many now. It will be viewed by a lot. Um, and what about North Korea? You, uh, you were telling me earlier, they uh, they don't appreciate parody, not one bit. Uh, but that what are the chances the DVD could fall into some hands of people there in North Korea? It's certainly possible. We have heard from at least one activist here in South Korea, a defector who escaped from North Korea, uh, that he intends to, to launch some propaganda balloons, as they're called. This is helium balloons uh, launched across the border from South to North Korea, carrying DVDs, carrying money, carrying other things. Uh, in the past, those DVDs have had documentaries on them showing uh, what they say is the truth about North Korea, trying to educate the North Koreans and, and try and cut through some of the propaganda that they're being fed by their own government. Uh, and of course, the activist is now saying he's going to be sending some copies of the DVD. It is possible that a very small minority of people within the country may see the movie, uh, as we do know from some defectors that uh, those DVDs have got into the hands uh, of people along the border region before. This is something that Pyongyang will be very concerned about. They have built this cult-like personality around not just Kim Jong-un, the current leader, but the entire Kim dynasty. They don't want that bubble to be burst. Natalie? Yes, and uh, they have worked very hard to try to keep that from happening. We'll wait and see if uh, what we hear about the film making it into North Korea, it's certainly there in South Korea, as you say, it's being downloaded. Thank you, Paula Hancox, for us. Well, let's talk about how the film did uh, at the box office. It earned $1 million on Christmas Day, playing in only about 300 U.S. theaters. Sony had planned to release the film in two to 3,000 theaters, before um, the hacking uh, issue, sales figures for online viewing, not in yet. But again, it has been downloaded uh, uh, many times illegally.
online. Meantime, at least two cybersecurity firms are now raising new doubts about whether North Korea was indeed behind the hacking of Sony Pictures. Here's Brian Todd. The forensic trail of the Sony hack. It's mysterious, difficult to follow, and now is sparking increasing doubt over the FBI's belief that hackers working for North Korea are responsible. It's clear to us, based on both uh, forensic and other evidence that we've collected, that unequivocally they are not responsible uh, for orchestrating or uh, initiating the attack on Sony. Sam Glines' cybersecurity firm, Norse, did its own investigation of the Sony hack. Norse and another leading security firm called Cloudflare raised serious questions about the FBI's claim that the malware used in the Sony attack is similar to malware used in other attacks by North Korea. These firms say that malware was leaked a long time ago and could have been used by hackers anywhere in the world. Previously, U.S. investigators said they have evidence hackers stole the computer credentials of a Sony insider, but Norse believes it was given out and they tracked the attack to one potential suspect. A woman codenamed Lena, a former Sony employee who Glein says worked for Sony for several years. Glein says Lena has ties to the hacking group Guardians of Peace, which claims responsibility for the Sony hit. Glein says Lena was a security staffer with Sony who had what he calls super user access to the company's cyber secrets, usernames and passwords to critical systems. He says Lena had two motives for the hack. First of all, how Sony treated its employees' layoffs. Uh, that were going on in the department, uh, but also a uh, bigger issue around piracy and how Sony was treating those uh, who had pirated music and been uh, and movies and other content uh, and how they had been uh, prosecuted in, in the U.S. and other countries. Experts have lingering doubts about North Korea's ability to carry out such a sophisticated attack. It's beyond the skill level that we've been able to observe. But if North Korea did commit the Sony hack, Analysts say it would have been done by a shadowy unit of the government called the Reconnaissance General Bureau, which they say conducts cyber warfare. It's commanded by General Kim Yong-chol, a very influential former bodyguard for Kim Jong-un's father and grandfather. So they have somebody that's an intimate to the Kim family, um, who's also a very effective manager, uh, a supervisor. And that actually shows the importance that North Korea's uh, national security apparatus places on, these, on, on uh, electronic and cyber capabilities. North Korea has emphatically denied hacking Sony. As for the tracking of the hack to a former Sony employee named Lena, Sam Glines of Norse Corporation says his firm has shared that information with the FBI. We reached out to the FBI and to Sony regarding the findings on Lena, and we asked the FBI for comment on the overall doubts that North Korea did this. Neither the FBI nor Sony would comment on any of it. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. Well, while many moviegoers say they're seeing the interview as a way to defend free speech rights, others say the film may be undermining those rights. Three weeks from tonight, I will be traveling to Pyongyang, North Korea, to interview President Kim Jong-un. And that is because the movie's main characters are journalists. CNN's chief international journalist, Christian Amanpour, says the film may threaten journalist safety. In an opinion piece on CNN.com, she writes, The interview might be very funny. I just wish it weren't yet more fodder for the deluded who see journalists as their mortal enemy. CNN's Aisha Sassay spoke with the executive director of Columbia's journalism school about this issue. Christian raises very valid points. And the main point is that enemies of free press frequently confuse journalists doing their jobs with being enemies of the state. And whenever we see this sort of depiction of journalists in mainstream media, you know, it's not ideal. I mean, we've also seen how sort of the humor in America does not always translate into other countries. Um, Chris John mentions British Iranian journalist Mazar Bahari, who appeared in Tehran in some skits from The Daily Show that Basically, the point of those skits was to show how alike Iranians and Americans are. Unfortunately, authorities there did not see the humor in that, and he was detained. So it's a very fine line with this it, kind of humor. It, no, you're right. It, it, it is indeed a very fine line, but it, it is worth stressing. And many would say these, you know, Seth, you know, James Franco and Seth Rogen clearly are bumbling idiots as journalists, and you know, are so extreme caricatures um, of journalists that. 
you know, you can see offense in just about anything if you wish to see it. But, I mean, these guys, you know, are harmless buffoons. At least that's what the film is putting out there. Right, and, that, and fair enough. But again, I mean, they seem like buffoons to us. We don't know how they're going to seem to other people in other countries. Um, so that was her point, which is incredibly valid. Meanwhile, the other thing going on with this film that we saw earlier this month was acts of self-censorship, which we've almost never seen in the United States on this level, um, which is another attack on freedom of expression. So that's another, was an incredible angle of it that happily we're not seeing is not playing out as feared. And again, uh, the interview made $1 million on its opening day in 300 theaters in the U.S. On other news, we're following the U.S. plans to move as many as five Guantanamo Bay detainees in the coming.